Hey everybody, this video is called What is Simon's? And today we're going to continue our pass through study here in the book of Joshua, looking at the 19th chapter, where we're going to be talking about what land is given to Simon. So, Joshua chapter 19, verses 1 through 9, it says, The second lot came out for Simon, for the tribe of the children of Simon, according to their families. And their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had in their inheritance Beersheba, Sheba, Molada, Hazar, Shuo, Bala, Ezem, El Tolad, Bethel, Mora, or Horma, Ziglag, Beth, Markaboth, Hazar, Susha, Beth, Leboeth, and Shar, Huhen. Thirteen cities in their villages. Ain, Rimen, Ether and Aishan, four cities in their villages, and all the ch the villages that were around these cities, as far as Belath, Bear, Ramah of the south, this was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simon, according to their families. The inheritance of the children of Simon was included in the share of the children of Judah, for the share of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simon had their inheritance within the inheritance of that people. So this area in verses 1 through 9 was the southern portion of Judah's territory. And since that allotment was more than what was Judah needed. And these are the boundaries and the cities that were mentioned for the tribe of Simon. In verse 10 through 16, it says, The third lot came out for the children of Zebulon, according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was as far as Sarid. Their border went toward the west and to Mar Marilla and went to Dabasheth and extended along the brook that is east of Joknim. Then from Sarid, it went eastward toward the sunrise along the border of Chisloth, Tabor, and went out toward Deberoth, bypassing Japhia. And from there it passed along the east of Gath Hefer, toward Eth Kazen, and extended to Remon, which borders on Nia. Then the border went all around it on the north side of Hananthon, and it ended in the valley of Zifta El. It included were Kataath, Nahal El, Shimron, Idela and Bethlehem. Twelve cities and their villages. This was the inheritance of the children of Zebulon according to their families, these cities with their villages. So the allotment that laid west here of the Lake of Chinneroth, the Sea of Galilee, and ran to the Mediterranean Sea. And these were the boundaries and the cities that were for the tribe of Zebulon. In verse 17 through 23, it says, the fourth lot came out to Izachar for the children of Izachar, according to their families, and their territory went to Zezreel, and it included Chesuloth, Trunam, Hafraim, Shion, Anaharoth, Rabith, Kishion, Ebez, Remith, and Ganem, and Hada, and Beth, Pazez. And the border reached to Tabor. Shazima and Beth Shemesh. Their border extended at the Jordan, 16 cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Izachar, according to their families, the cities, and their those uh, villages. So Izachar area, it ran just below the Sea of Galilee from the Jordan west over to Mount Tabor, and it circled southwest almost to Megiddo, north of Manasseh's portion. In verse uh, 24 through 31 says, the fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, and their territory included Helkath, Hali, Beten, Ak Shaf, Elamelech, Emad, and Mish Mishal. It reached to Mount Carmel westward along the brook of Sior, Libnath, it turned toward the sunrise to Beth Dagon, and it reached to Zebulon and to the valley of Zifda El, and then northward beyond Beth Emek and Nael, bypassing Kabul, which is on the left, including 
Abron, Rohob, Hammon, and Cana, as far as the greater Sidon, Sidon. And the border turned to Ramah and to the fortified city of Tyre. Then the border turned to Hosa and ended at the sea of the region of Akzib. Also, Uma, Aphek, and Rehob were included, 22 cities in their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. So, Asher's territory was a long, broad strip that flanked the Mediterranean on the west, and then Naphtali's and Zebulon's claims on the east running south uh, uh, to Manasseh's. And it reached from Mount Carmel in the south to the area of Tyre in the north. In verse 32 through 39, speaks of Naphtali. The Sitzlot came out to the children of Naphtali, for the children of Naphtali according to their families. And their border began at Halef, and closing the territory from the Terebinth tree. In Zainanam, Adami, Nekib, and Jabnail, as far as Lakeham, it ended at the Jordan. In Halef, the border extended westward to Aznoth, Tabor, and went from there from Hukok. It adjoined Zebulon on the south side and Asher on the west side and ended at Judah by the Jordan toward the sunrise. And the fortified cities are Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rekath, Chinnereth, Adamah, Ramah, Hazor, Kadesh, Edre, and Hazor, Iron, Migdal, El, Horam, Beth, Anath, and Beth, Shemesh, 19 cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities and their villages. So we see a very long chapter that we are passing through here. But Naphtali's region, it took a long stretch of land with the border at the northern edge of all the Israelite inheritances. And it was a line on the west that divided from Asher down southward to follow Jebulon's northern border. And then it struck eastward toward the Sea of Galilee with the land to the west, alongside that sea and down the Isachar's claim and over to the Jordan River. And the eastern line, it ran northward, including the city of Hazor and also Dan. And then it swung north of Dan. And the tree, bent tree in verse 33 uh, many of you probably don't even know what the tree bent tree is, but you can think of it as an oak tree if you have oak trees where you live. And that was near Kadesh, north and northward of the waters at Merom. And later in the next study, Lord Willen will be in the book of Judges here in the next uh, few weeks. It was the site where J.L. killed Sisera with a hammer and tent peg in Judges 4.21. So, see, they didn't even need guns, you know, a uh, little hint for Judges 4, what's about to come for Israel. But you didn't need guns to kill somebody. All you had, all you needed was that hammer with a tent peg to kill somebody. But uh, I don't want to get too uh, caught up in that right now. But uh, verse 40 through 48, it says, The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, According to their families and the territory of their inheritance was Zora, Eshteo, Ur Shemesh, She Laban, A Jalon, Jethla, A Elon, not Elon from uh, the Tulsa company or Tesla, whatever you want to call it. Elon, Timna, Ekron, El Tekeh, Gebrthon, Bathoth, Jehud, Beni Barak, Gath Ramon, Me Jarkon, and Recon with the region near Jopa, and I believe there's a place called Jopa, Missouri, if I am right. And the border of the children of Dan went beyond these, because the children of Dan went up to fight against Lasham and took it, and they struck it with the edge of the sword, took possession of it, and dwelt in it. They called Lasham Dan after the name of Dan, their father. And this was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to the families, these cities with their villages. So the Dan tribal allotment was a narrow, roughly U-shaped strip just north of Judah's 
claim in south of Ephraim. In the Mediterranean coast, they laid on the western arm of the U. And Joppa, or Joppa, was on the coast near the north end. And later, the Dayites, they failed to possess their original claim, and they migrated northeastward to a territory by Laesh, or Lasham, as we'll see in the next few weeks when we go into Judges chapter 1. And they conquered this area north of the Sea of Galilee, and Hazor, and they renamed it Dan that we see. In verse 49 through 51, wraps up the chapter here, says, When they made an end of dividing the land as an inheritance according to their borders, the children of Israel gave an inheritance among them to Joshua, son of Nun, according to the word that the Lord they gave him, the city, which he asked for, Timnath, Surah, and the mountains of Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt in it. These were the inheritances, inheritances of Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, divided as an inheritance by Lot, in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of Meton. So they made an end of dividing the country. So we see that Joshua receives Hazor, and he renamed it, uh, he received his own inheritance from the children of Israel, an area where he preferred in the hills of his tribe of Ephraim. And he built a city, Timnath Sarah, which was about 16 miles southwest of Shechem. And his inheritance was an essential part of God's promise to him, as was also Caleb's inheritance. In Joshua, he received the portion last in humility. And remember that Joshua, when we go through the book of Joshua and we look at Joshua as a person, Joshua gives us a picture of Jesus. And Joshua was a kind, humble uh, servant. He, he, he served humbly and he was kind. And his concern for others is what gave the wonderful picture of Jesus, who Jesus came. He came as humble and kind. Now, I understand he wasn't always uh, modern, modernly correct with his choice of words back in Matthew 23. Uh, Jesus preached that message. He'd probably end up in Facebook jail or whatever today. But overall, Jesus came to serve and not to be served. And we're going to look at a verse in the gospel according to Matthew coming up here. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, it says... Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and gave, give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus came to serve. Jesus didn't come to be served. Jesus came to serve. Jesus came to fulfill the Father's will in redeeming his people to himself. And I want to go over to Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. And through 17 here, says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Jebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, very popular uh, verse that most of us know, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So a side note is that Jesus, Galilean ministry, takes place largely in the area of Naphtali. So Naphtali is not just an Old Testament name that goes away. There's a even a greater purpose when you go into the gospel according to Matthew. So that's going to wrap up this video today. And we'll see you next as we're going to look at the cities of refuge in Joshua chapter 20. So I hope you have a great rest of your night. God bless.